Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski here, working through IXL's 8th grade math section F. Good overview of all the exponent properties we've learned so far. We're going to evaluate expressions using properties of exponents. Alright, so when we've got the same base, we know that we can subtract their exponents. So 5 minus 3 is 2, this is just 7 squared. We are going to take it one step further and make this 49 today. Okay, we're not just going to leave it as a power. Uh, same idea here, but since my denominator is bigger than my uh, numerator, I'm going to do 9 minus 7 is 2, so I'll leave this as 1 over 12 squared. Well, I won't leave it like that. I'll actually evaluate it, make it 1 over 144. A couple ways we could look at this one. You could look at it as uh, they have the same base, so you add the exponents. That would be 4 to the 4th. Or you could look at it as they have the same exponents, so you could multiply the bases and keep that exponent. Okay, so either way, you get 256. Four to the fourth and 16 squared are both 256. Well, these don't have the same base, they don't have the same exponent, so we're just going to do 2 to the 4th power is 16, and 7 squared is 49, and that's all we can do. And as a little hint, that we know that can't be simplified because their base is 2 and 7. They don't have any common factors, so you're not going to be able to simplify the end fraction either. These do have the same base, um, or I'm, I'm sorry, they have a different base, but the same power. So what we can do is write this as 12 times 6, which is 72, to the power of 2, we just keep that exponent, and 72 squared is 5,184. Definitely going to need a calculator some for some of these today. Negative exponents, I don't see any, they don't have the same base, um, so we have to know the negative exponent property. This is really 9 squared over 5 to the first. So, you, you know, you flip the one that's got, that's on bottom to the top to make the exponent positive, and same with the one that's on top, you flip it to the bottom of the fraction to make the exponent positive. So 9 squared is 81, 5 to the first is 5, we'll just call this 81 over 5. We get a negative exponent, but that doesn't change the rule that we add the exponents together. 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. And then the negative exponent rule means we can make this 1 over 9 to the positive first, or just 1 over 9. All right, again, different bases. Let's leave the 8 in the numerator, but instead of multiplying by 12 to the negative first, let's divide by 12 to the positive first. That can be simplified. Um, 8 is divisible by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So make sure to simplify your answer. It's 12 thirds. All right, we have two different bases here. We have the 5, and then we have the 2. With the 2, we can just add these two exponents and make those negative 3. All right. Um, and then I'm going to rewrite that as 5 squared over 2 cubed using the negative exponent rule. They don't have the same base, they don't have the same power, so it's not like we can add or subtract or anything like that. 5 squared is 25, and 2 cubed is 8, and that can't be simplified, and that's the, that's the way we're going to leave our answer, as an improper fraction. Okay, uh, nine, anything to the zero power is one. And then this 12 to the negative two, instead of dividing by 12 to the negative two, let's multiply by 12 to the positive two. One times 144, or 144. All right, again, 10 to the 0 is 1, so we can kind of basically ignore it. We'll just leave that 10 to the negative 4th as our numerator. Uh, in the denominator, 
we can add those two exponents. Negative 1 plus negative 5 makes negative 6. There's a couple of ways you could look at this. You could look at it as 10 to the power of um, negative 4 minus negative 6. That might be a little confusing for people. It's positive 2 either way, or if you look at it that way, negative 4 minus negative 6 is positive 2. Some people might prefer to look at this as 10 to the 6th over 10 to the 4th. Maybe then they can see it as 10 squared a little bit easier, which is 100. Again, a lot of this for people might be mental math. I'm just kind of showing you what my mind's seeing. All three of these bases are different. All right, so I'm going to use the negative exponent property to kind of move things around. That 10 to the negative third, I'll move it to the top, make it 10 to the positive third. 3 to the fourth, I'll leave it right where it is. And that 11 to the negative first, move it down to the bottom. So this is going to be 1,000 over 81 times 11. And 81 times 11 is 891. So let's make it this 1,000 over 891. A couple more. Uh, again, probably easiest way to think about this, instead of doing negative 5 minus negative 7 with those exponents, which we could do because they have the same base, 3, most people will probably think about this like flipping them around um, to make the exponents positive. Because then we can do 7 minus 5 is positive 2. 3 squared is 9. 2 to the 4th is 16, and 9 times 16 is 144. You might have to grab for a calculator there, unless you got pretty good mental math and number skills, but... All right, uh, one more here. You got some negative exponents, so maybe let's rearrange it and make them positive. Let's make it 8 squared times 6 squared over 3 to the 4th. One thing I do notice is that three and this three and the six, um, they have common factors. So I am going to need to simplify this when I'm done. Um, let's make this 64 times 36 over 81. Maybe right now is the best place to simplify. Nine goes into 81 nine times, and nine goes into 36 four times. Now we can just do 64 times four which is 256 over 9. And again, this is how IXL is going to want your answer written. In fact, they don't give you any choice. They give you a couple box and make you write it in as an improper fraction. All right, so again, a good review of using all our exponent properties, um, evaluating expressions using properties of exponents. Good luck. Let me know how it goes.